Hello there and welcome to part two of this CPD talk on the portfolios. So in part one, we went through the general process of progression in biomedical science and went through the registration portfolios. It was a very, very long talk. If you have already completed the registration portfolio, then you can always go and listen to the beginning of that talk because it is quite useful in terms of how you progress in biomedical science. However, this is obviously the talk that you want to go through when we're discussing the specialist portfolios. So what we're we covering? Specialist portfolio. Why complete the portfolio and the process of obtaining a portfolio? Overviews of what is expected in the portfolio good and bad evidence, examples, the other components of the portfolio. So why complete the specialist portfolio? I have asked a few people why they wanted to complete the specialist portfolio. And it's been interesting, but most commonly the answer is to get a pay rise. While it is true, obviously the specialist portfolio is there to allow you to progress and it is there to enable you to go from a band five to a band six. The aim of it is not for you to get a pay rise. The aim of it is so that you understand why we are following the procedures that we follow in the lab in more detail and therefore can give a better quality of care for patients. So if you are going to start this portfolio, I really want it clear in your mind why you are doing it. If you're going to sit there and try and rush through it as quickly as possible, copying and pasting, it's not going to be an enjoyable experience for you. It's not going to be an enjoyable experience for the person marking it. Um, and quite often, the people that try and do that are the people that don't end up completing the portfolio. So before you jump into starting a portfolio, it's really important that you are doing it for the right reasons. Now, the specialist portfolio is available for each specific discipline in biomedical science. So it's very different to the registration portfolio that is obviously a generic qualification. This is to allow you to specialise in your discipline. As previously mentioned, you can do a master's degree. However, Generally, these will not be NHS funding, they're not as relevant to on the bench worth, and they do not provide experience based learning. So at NKPS, we strongly prefer the use of the specialist portfolio. The specialist portfolio itself is slightly different to the registration portfolio. You should be showing your understanding of the standards by answering preset questions from your departmental trainer. And when answering these questions, you can still use evidence in the same way as with the registration portfolio, and it's recommended that you do so. You must have at least one piece of evidence for each section. So this evidence can be generated from the questions. So, for example, if you have a question in one of your sections that says, please include a case study of a sickle cell patient, then the case study of the sickle cell patient can be used as your evidence. However, it can also be a completely separate entity. So you could have one bit that is questions and then just start each bit with evidence. It's up to you how you put your specialist portfolio together. At the end of each section, you must reflect on the pieces of evidence that you have selected. This reflection is in the actual portfolio book itself. So there is a section in here for you to write your reflections on. So don't worry about actually typing up something specifically to put in your portfolio. Um, you can go through this with your training officer. The portfolio is split into sections based on the knowledge required. Depending on what you choose to specialise in, this will vary, but normally it relates to a disease or a method of testing. So, for example, in the haematology and transfusion one, you've got a section on iron deficiency and a section on hemolytic anemias and then a whole transfusion section that is split up into more sections. Once you've completed the questions, these should be marked by the person in that department who has set the questions. So unlike the registration portfolio, you're probably going to have several different markers for your specialist portfolio, depending on the amount of de departments you have. So in haematology, for example, you will have a transfusion senior marking transfusion, a haematology senior marking haematology. That might also be split 
hooked up into having a coag, senior coag, um, etc. And then once you've completed all of these sections, it will be reviewed by the overall training officer. Good and bad evidence for the specialist portfolio would follow the same specifications as for the registration portfolio. There is a presentation outlining this on QPulse, but in general, this means that if you are including extracts from external sources, whether this be photographs, diagrams, text, these should be annotated and referenced. Um, to prove that you actually understand the bit of information that you have put in there. Examiners do not want essay answers. If a question can be answered in a creative way, then this will make it more fun for the person marking it and will make your evidence stand out. Also, when you use big, big bodies of text, it does not necessarily show understanding of the information. Varying your evidence gives a lot better representation of your understanding. So it's harder to give examples regarding the specialist However, I'm going to use again the haematology and transfusion one because obviously that's the one that I have completed. If we were to take a look at the transfusion section, 8.1a in the newest version of the portfolio, the questions on QPOS have a wide range of answers, not just bold text, but also a few input interpretations for ABO block groups. Question one asks about antigen structures. Having annotated diagrams will make this a lot more interesting answer. Another question asks about IQA and EQA. Whilst you should have supporting text, if you complete the NEQUEST exercise, you could annotate your results and the report and use this as evidence for this section, as not only would it be useful to answer the question, but if you have performed the testing and interpretation, it shows that you can follow the procedure and understand the background information. So it's actually better than just saying, oh yeah, we complete NEQAS at least once a year, each person will do it. We put some stuff on the analyzer, blah, blah, blah. You can show that you have actually put samples on the analyzer or tested them manually. You've interpreted those results. And when compared with other labs, you've got the correct results. Or if you've done it incorrectly, then you can include information about that as well. So you can see how by answering the questions, you can also provide a piece of evidence as well. The other components of the portfolio. So there are actually three other things with, as well as the portfolio that will need to be completed. As previously mentioned, this includes the reflections at the end of each section. It also includes an oral presentation, which will be given to the examiner on the day. And similarly to the registration portfolio, it includes a laboratory walk around. So the reflections. At the end of each section, you are meant to look at each piece of evidence that you have selected and reflect on why you have chosen this to represent your understanding of this section. This is something that a lot of people find difficult, but it's really important to develop this skill. The next thing that you will have to create is an oral presentation. So as part of the portfolio, you must create a 15 to 20 minute oral presentation and it should include an indication of the candidate's scope of practice and how it has developed since registration, current laboratory developments or recent trends. So obviously right now a big one is going to be COVID. And finally, special interests or professional activities. So really, this oral presentation should be quite an easy one to write because it's all about you. Finally, you will have the laboratory tour to give. This is now 60 minutes, so it's double the amount of time that you should have had for the registration portfolio. Um, there have been some changes to allow this to become an electronic tour, again, due to COVID. And whereas the original lab tour should have been more generic, this one will be going into a lot more in-depth knowledge of the laboratory procedures and the receipt and the reasons that these are in place. Um, so how you would deal with QC failures, how the analyzers actually function, um, what you'd use each of the blood products for if you're in transfusion, etc. And again, the examiner can cut you off if you overrun. So it's important that you practice and try and keep it within that 60 minute time. The one thing that I forgot to mention was currently in the department, in terms of 
starting their specialist portfolio, we are trialling a new method whereby people are needing to hand in a couple of sections of their specialist before they are given the opportunity to actually have an official specialist portfolio. This is just because there are several people around with expired specialist portfolios um, and the idea is to give you an opportunity of understanding the workload that you'd be committing to um, as well as giving us an idea as to how much work you would need to do. So hopefully that makes sense but after you had submitted a couple of pieces of work we would then go forward with trying to procure you a specialist portfolio. So it's literally down to you having the time to work towards this and the motivation to want to do it. The questions for the portfolios, at the very least in haematology and transfusion, are all on QPOS, so you should be able to access these and start whenever you want. The only thing will be is that if you are handing in work and there are lots of other people who have a current specialist portfolio and they're handing in work, then the marking of their work will be prioritised over yours because you currently don't have a time limit on what you're doing. But that's about it. So thank you so much for listening. I hope this has been a useful talk for you. Obviously, if you do a reflection on it, then it can be used as CPD. Um, and if you leave the reflection on my in my office, then I will ensure that you get a CPD certificate. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. Okay, bye!